Now a man who discovered after being diagnosed with the life-limiting illness cystic fibrosis that he couldn't be the father of his three sons because the condition causes lifelong infertility has told this program the news left him feeling suicidal. Doctors revealed in 2016 that Richard Mason couldn't be the dad to the children who are now 19 and 23. Richard sued his wife of 20 years, Kate, and they recently reached a settlement of £250,000 with her admitting she'd had an affair while the couple had been married. Well, we spoke to Richard and his current partner, Emma. When he said to me, you've got cystic fibrosis, I immediately thought, oh my God, my sister died of that at 29. And her death was very hard for me because with cystic fibrosis, you slowly suffocate on your own phlegm. And it took her two years to, to eventually um, waiting for a heart and lung transplant. And then she died on the operating theater. So immediately I was just very saddened by that. But then um, when the discussion then turned to fertility and he said, look, um, yourself and Emma, you know, you're going to have difficulty having children because you are, as a man with cystic fibrosis, infertile. It was suddenly like being hit by a sledgehammer. I just went, oh my God. You know, you, you suddenly realise that you children aren't yours. So I so said, well... immediately you knew the significance of what he just said to you? Yes. Yes. Both of you? Mm, there, were, there were medical experts in the room and, you know, they, it's impossible without IVF for a man with cystic fibrosis to, to have a baby. So then I said, well, you must have the diagnosis wrong because I've already got three boys. And, but I sort of was, like, clutching at straws there. So after that, it became a complete blur for me because it was almost like, you know, I don't know if you've ever hit your head really, really hard and it's like a ringing and you just, you, you can't see anything that's going on around you, you can't think of anything that's going on around you. It's almost like you, you just have this ringing in your ears and it's all the implications of everything as a result of that start, you know, flashing through your, your mind. Like, what kind of questions are you then immediately yeah. asking yourself? You just wanted to go straight to, to phone Kate, his ex-wife, say, Kate, spare me the dignity, just tell me the truth. Was there anyone else? When I'd managed to compose myself, it was about an hour later, I sent her a text and I said, look, um, and the, this text has been in the, the press, but it, it was actually repeated verbatim from what I sent to her, and it's still on my phone now. I said to her, look, I've just been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. I'm not expecting you to be sympathetic about that, because she's a very hard person. And, uh, but the reason I'm telling you is that the boys are not likely to have been fathered by me. Now, obviously, there's something's gone on. And if you are honest about it with me, um, I don't intend to sue you and you can decide how you want to tell the boys. If you want me to be there at the same time, that's fine. Um, but if you, if you lie to me, then I'll, I will take action and I'll decide how I'm telling the boys. And the immediate response I got back was, um, I am sympathetic, mm. but whatever science says, those boys will always be yours. Those it was boys a, will always be yours. Which was a, it's slightly different than mm. saying you are definitely yes. the dad. When you were diagnosed, your sons were 21 and the twins were 17, I think. Yes. When your then wife was pregnant on those occasions, did you ever suspect, have any inkling, ever think, oh, that's a bit odd, at the time of the pregnancy, through the birth, afterwards? Um, th there was... One or two occasions that, uh, after the boys were born, I thought that they didn't resemble me as much as, you know, you'd imagine that, that, that boys would. They didn't look like you? Um, well, they've got darker eyes than me. I would have almost no body hair, and the boys have got very dark hairs on their legs and things like that. But around the time that she got pregnant, we were, we'd been um, having unprotected sex for seven years. Nothing had happened. Mm. Now, she always said to me, I have a tilted womb, I don't know what that is, but it means that it's harder for a woman to get pregnant. So we'd always thought it was her, and we'd gone for 
uh, fertility treatment or to see the GP to start the fertility process. And the GP said, well, the first thing that uh, has to happen is you have to be tested, Mr Mason, mm. and then we test uh, your wife. Mm. Now, it's likely to be three occasions of, of um, IVF that you're going to need. They're about £5,000 a time, so it's £15,000. But after that, there's a good chance you will have a baby. So when we went home, we both were working at Barclays at the time, and um, she said, look, you know, we've got our careers. We're both, I mean, yuppies was a, like a, 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 in the 80s, a you know, really like popular term for young people who were uh, doing well in their careers. She said, we're both yuppies, let's just carry on with our careers and see how it goes. A few months later, she was pregnant. So I thought, oh my God, that's weird, because, you know, you often hear of people going for treatments and then suddenly naturally mm. get pregnant. And she said, oh, it's just one of those things. So I did feel a little bit, like, that's a surprise, you know, because we go for the, to start the IVF, then decide not to, and she gets pregnant. This is, I mean, you've described the turmoil, you've described it feeling like you were hit with a sledgehammer. Did you, did you consider taking your own life? Many times. The consultant said to me once, um, cystic fibrosis kicks in, and I'm one of the oldest people in the UK with cystic fibrosis, and probably the oldest person ever that yeah, I know of to be diagnosed with it. The average uh, death is 41, and, and yeah. most, most children die of it a lot younger, mm. like a sister as well, at 29. Yeah. So you know that you've not got a particularly pleasant future. Mm. How did the knowledge then of discovering that your boys couldn't be yours affect the way you felt towards them, if at all? Um, they're still my boys, and I still think of them as my sons now, as I have been their dad. Um, Do you love them as much? <laughs> you, can't, you can't not love somebody simply because... In fact, you know, even um, you know, if, if somebody committed some sort of um, offence against you, if the boys had done something wrong, I'd still love them. Mm. You know, but they've done absolutely nothing wrong. They're completely innocent in this as well. They are the victim, like I am. So, of course, yeah, my, my arms are still open for them. And I would dearly love them to, you know, to come back into my life. Well, two of them, I understand, aren't in your life because they are cross that you sued your ex-wife, Kate. Yeah. Um, it, it's paternity fraud, you said. You won this court case, this settlement of £250,000 from your wife. Why would you risk your relationship with your boys when you say you are their dad, you love them as much, by going ahead with that legal action? I always brought my boys up, to be honest, stand up to bullies, never tell lies. All the time, I, I was divorced from her for 10 years, and all the time they were with me, all the weekends that they were around at my house, I used to say to them, look, do not keep any secrets from your mum. Be open and honest with her. You know, anything I do, anything I say, I don't mind your mum knowing about it because it's, I want an open, honest relationship with them. So I brought them up to be open, honest, stand up to, to what you think is right. Somebody committed a 21-year fraud yeah, against me. Yeah, not them. And now no, you've no, lost no. two of them. They're not in your but life. But the point is, how do I allow somebody who has committed something like that against me, my ex-wife, mm to just go off scot-free, because there are many times... Because the risk is you lose two of them and that's what's happened. But they're grown men. They're grown men. Mm. They understand that I have to take action against it. In, in families, when there's been tragedy or, or anything like this, history tends to repeat itself through generations, and Richard wants to ensure that those boys don't think this is normal behaviour. She was completely denying that I wasn't the biological father. So f up until the court case, only a few weeks ago, she was still saying, even with DNA evidence, I'm sorry, the DNA evidence must be flawed. And the court case You're is, the biological absolutely father. settled that, yeah. So if I am the biological father, those boys all have a risk of having cystic fibrosis. They all need to tell their insurance companies. Mm. They need to tell their potential partners. Their children might have cystic fibrosis. I wouldn't even be allowed to meet them because people with cystic fibrosis cannot meet other people with cystic fibrosis because they cross-infect. Right. So by going to, via my solicitor, finally, she then, a few weeks ago, said, actually, I accept you're not the biological father. The boys have got no chance of having cystic fibrosis from me. I can meet them now, and they're free of knowing that they've got a potential genetic disease. Understood. Do you know who the father is? I've no idea. 
Why have you offered a £5,000 rewards to find out? I was toying with that as a, as a um, strategy because what I, what I feel like is two-fifths of my life, 20-odd years of my life, have been a complete um, lie. The person I thought I was, I'm not. The, the relationship I had with the boys is not the same as, as, uh, as I thought it was. Mm. Um, a wife that I thought was, was loyal, but I had to divorce because we didn't get on, uh, was not. So what I want to do is sit down with this guy and say, were you there in their life? When I was watching the, them play football, were you there? Did you buy them Christmas presents? How did you um, deal with the first pregnancy? Mm. You know, did you know about the pregnancies? Did, were you there for the second pregnancy? You want to meet him and you want to ask yeah, those questions? Yeah, you want to find yeah. out what happened. It's almost like you've been in a coma for 20 years and you wake up and you think, God, this guy is a significant participant in my life that I have never met. OK. And I have a desire to do that before I die. Do you know when that will be? Uh, my lungs have deteriorated about 15% in two years. And that level of deterioration may be six to ten years. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. We appreciate it. We wish you all the best okay. as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.